Hello, General Chemistry Lab. Here we're going to be going into the uh, inner workings of the hydrolysis of salts lab. Essentially, what happens when you add a salt to water, and as that salt dissociates into its anions and cations, are they going to uh, interact with water, and in doing so affect the pH of a solution? Normally, DI water, well, DI water is neutral and has a pH of 7. If for a lab we don't have access to DI water, then water from the sink might have a slightly off neutral pH, maybe slightly acidic or slightly basic. In general, if you add an acid and as it dissociates into ions, some interactions happen that causes the pH to go below 7, that salt would be known in, as an acidic salt. Whereas if adding a salt ends up increasing the pH, then that would be known as a basic salt. And there's no change in pH, then that would be a neutral salt. Some examples of dissociated ions, once a salt breaks up into its ions, here's a good chart representing whether those ions would have neutral interactions, acidic interactions, or basic interactions, uh, as shown from the left, middle, and <coughs> right sides of our chart. So using that information for the reactions that you're going to see, let's start looking into those. The reaction that's at the top here, that's the dissociation reaction. I'm not going to ask you to include that in your post-laboratory write-up. Essentially, just include the actual interaction with water. And if there is no interaction, just write no reaction. If we look at sodium chloride, as it dissociates, it will turn into sodium ions and chloride ions, which, according to our chart, both of those ions are neutral ions. That means that sodium will not react with water, and water will not react with chloride ions. So in, reaction, so in a sense, there's no reaction, and there should be no change in pH. If we look at our acidic salt, like zinc chloride, the dissociation reaction will be forming a zinc 2 ion and then two ions of chloride. Going to our chart, zinc is actually an acidic ion. Is, is an acidic ion. That means that it will react with water. Capturing some of those OH components, some of those hydroxide components, and end up forming acidic hydrogen. In reality, that's hydronium ion, but here we're just going to represent it as H+. So if we see zinc, it's going to react with water and free up some of those acidic hydrogens in a 1 to 2 reaction. And the chloride ion still would have no reaction, so overall you should see the pH of your solution lower because it is increasing the free hydrogen ion concentration. If we look at another acidic salt, ammonium chloride, as that breaks apart into ions, that would be ammonium ion and chloride ion. And the only one that should have an interaction with water is the ammonium ion. As it reacts with water, it's going to form ammonia and <clears throat> hydronium ion, H3O+. Plus which you can treat that the same thing as a freely suspended hydrogen ion, H+. And since that's the only salt ion that has an interaction, we know that that's actually going to lower the pH of our solution. For something like potassium aluminum sulfate, it, it depends. As that salt breaks apart into ions, it's going to form potassium, aluminum, and sulfate ions. Now, potassium ions, those are neutral, so we do not care about them in regards to our reaction with water. However, whether what happens next is really, it depends. Essentially, if as you add this salt and you see your pH is lowered, use the aluminum reaction, where aluminum reacts with three water molecules to form aluminum hydroxide and three free hydrogen ions. 
If you see your pH is actually raised and becomes more basic, use the sulfate path where water reacts with sulfate to form hydrogen sulfate and a freely available basic hydroxide ion. So for your post-lab report, based off of the pH, choose the reaction that actually is pr predominant. And you can just not write the rest. For a clearly basic salt, sodium acetate, breaking up into sodium and acetate ions, the sodium ion should have no effect on the pH, but the actual interaction with water, the actual one you would write down in your post-lab report, is water reacting with the acetate ion to form acetic acid and a freely available basic hydroxide ion. Because hydroxide ions are becoming available after adding this salt, it should raise the pH of your solution. Another classic basic salt is sodium carbonate, breaking up into two sodium ions and carbonate ions. The one that's of interest that actually interacts with water would be water reacting with carbonate to form bicarbonate and hydroxide. And the hydroxide is what raises the pH. When looking at this chart, essentially, this is from your procedure for universal indicator. Essentially, if you see a range in pH, just and that's the color that you see for your solution, just take the average of that range as your pH value. For example, if your solution ends up turning red after you add that salt, then instead of guessing between 0 and 3, just assume qualitatively that it's at 1.5 pH. And if your solution turned blue, well, instead of 8 to 11, just average it out and assume that the pH changed to 9.5. This, this lab is meant to be very qualitative and not quantitative. Let's see. Now, the actual thing that you'll be doing with your ice charts, you'll be using ice charts to calculate your Ka and Kb dissociation constants. Essentially, if you have an acidic salt, or in other words, your pH is below 7, then calculate... Then you'll need to calculate how much freely available hydrogen ions becomes available. In our ice chart, we're essentially taking our zinc ion concentration from zinc chloride. For every zinc chloride that breaks apart, it's a one-to-one -one reaction with the same amount of zinc ions. If our concentration is 0.1, then we have 0.1 zinc ions. Before those zinc ions interact with water, we start out with 0.1 molar of zinc ion. We never include water in our ice tables. That's why I'm ignoring this column right here. And initially, zinc has not interacted with the water. Therefore, our initial concentration of hydrogen is zero. And our zinc hydroxide concentration is also zero. For each part of our change row, we're going to be adding our x factor. Because zinc concentration is going to be decreasing, it'll be minus x. And hydrogen and zinc hydroxide concentration should increase after adding the zinc chloride salt. Therefore, it'll be plus x plus x. Additionally, multiply this row by the stoichiometry. Our chemical reaction is one unit of zinc reacting with water to form two units of hydrogen and one unit of zinc hydroxide. So one unit of zinc, or stoichiometry of one, minus one x, stoichiometry of two H plus, plus two x, stoichiometry of one zinc hydroxide, plus one x. 
And then your equilibrium row is just taking your initial row plus your change row. So at equilibrium, the zinc ion concentration should be 0.1 molar minus x, <coughs> or whatever the starting concentration was, minus x. At equilibrium, the hydrogen ion concentration should be 0 plus 2x, and zinc hydroxide would be 0 plus x, or just x. The nice thing is, if you know pH, you already know or you already have access to the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen, and that is just simply taking whatever your pH value is, take 10 raised to the negative pH. If you got a pH value of 1.5, then this box right here equals 10 raised to the negative 5, or negative 1.5. And in this case, you would have 0 plus 2x equaling that number. So then just take that number, divide by 2, to get your x value, which is relevant for each of these columns. Since you have an acidic situation, you can first calculate your Ka for the dissociation reaction of using your acidic <coughs> salt. For this, we take our product aqueous components, hydrogen ion, which because of the stoichiometry, you're going to square that concentration and then multiply it by the zinc hydroxide concentration raised to the first power, divided by the zinc ion concentration also raised to the first power, all because of stoichiometry. When it comes to this types of chemistry, your stoichiometry shows up twice. Once in multiplying your change factor, your x factor in your ice table, and as an exponent in your concentrations for your dissociation constant. Essentially, all these values are our values of ions or aqueous components at equilibrium. Well, at equilibrium, we know that the hydrogen ion concentration is 0 plus 2x whatever 2 times x equals, and whatever that equals, just square it. At equilibrium, zinc hydroxide is 0 plus x, whatever x factor is, put it here and raise it to the first power. And our denominator would be 0.1 minus x, and therefore once you calculate your x factor, take 0.1 minus that value, and once you put all this together, that's the value of Ka that you're going to include in your report. To calculate the Kb of the conjugate base of this reaction, that's just simply 10 to the negative 14th divided by whatever your Ka value is. And if you were asked to calculate your hydroxide ion concentration, essentially, if you have hydrogen ions you are also going to have a certain amount of hydroxide ions because there's an equilibrium between these two ions and water. So there's always going to be at least a little bit of both of these ions. So in your report, if it's not a new, uh, if you're asked to, calculate not just the hydrogen ion concentration, but the hydroxide ion concentration, which you can do that easily by just taking 14 minus your pH value, and then taking 10. Uh, let's see, hold, hold on a minute. Let's see. Ah, there you go. Um, I made a correction uh, in the formula. If you already know your pH, take 14 minus that pH value. If you got 1.5, then 14 minus 1.5, and whatever that equals, times it by negative 1, and take 10 raised to that number. And that will give you your hydroxide ion concentration for your solution. So the key here is for your acidic salt, calculate the acidic ions concentration, build up your ice table, assuming that these two values are initially zero for your hydrogen ion, 
and your your responding products compound and then based off of stoichiometry add that value of x so plus 2x plus 1x minus 1x to get your equilibrium row but you can quickly calculate this value here as 10 raised to the negative pH value. And then if this is 2x, then your x is just 0 plus 2x equals 10 raised to the negative pH. <coughs> and then just take this value divided by 2 to get x if there's a plus 2x. Otherwise, if it's plus 1x, then x just equals whatever's here. And then you already have x for all your other values that you plug into here. Be careful though, this is only for zinc chloride. For your other acidic salts, it might be just a single x in here, raised to the first power for hydrogen ion concentration. Essentially, stoichiometry shows up, I should actually say three places. Here, in your x factor for change row inside your brackets if you're multiplying it by your x factor but also always as an exponent as well so if it's acidic salts calculate your x factor build up your acid dissociation constant equilibrium expression solve for its value use that to solve for kb <coughs> and also use your ph like you did to solve for equilibrium of hydrogen ion concentration, you can use it to solve for hydroxide ion concentration. Now, if you have instead a basic salt, your pH is above seven. Well, here's how you start out that problem. Find your basic ion. Find its concentration, in this case, sodium carbonate. It's a one-to-one -one reaction between its starting compound and the amount of carbonate that is left. Here the equation is hydroxide ion concentration equals 10 raised to negative parenthesis 14 minus pH parenthesis. You can quickly calculate hydroxide ion concentration by just plugging in the pH value you qualitatively find into this equation. Now in your ice table, essentially your initial conditions, your initial conditions are you have your starting basic ion. It has not reacted with water yet, so you do not have your conjugate acid ion or conjugate acid, and you do not have your free-floating hydroxide ion concentration. As this reacts with water, it's going to decrease by some X factor, while your products will increase by some X factor. Make sure you write the actual chemical reaction, the relevant chemical reaction. So in this case, it's a one to one to one ratio. That's why all these X factors are multiplied by one. Minus one X plus one X plus one X. And then our equilibrium column would be the equilibrium concentration of carbonate anion is going to be its starting concentration minus x. The conjugate base of our, or the conjugate acid of our basic salt ion will be this row plus this row. In this particular case, 0 plus x, which just is x. And then hydroxide ion concentration, again, it's 0 plus x, but we can already calculate its actual answer as 10 raised to negative, parenthesis, 14 minus pH, parenthesis. So if you got 9 for your pH, 14 minus 9 <coughs> is 5. The hydroxide ion concentration at equilibrium is 10 raised to negative 5. Here, since we worked with a basic salt, you're going to solve for Kb first, your base dissociation constant, which includes your products. Anything that's not a solid and anything that's not liquid water. And in your denominator, that would be your basic ion. 
all these are supposed to be the equilibrium values of these concentrations, which according to our ice table chart for this sp specific basic salt, uh, hydrogen carbonate, that is just going to equal our X factor. Hydroxide ion concentration is going to equal our X factor. And carbonate is going to equal its initial concentration minus the X factor. Your X factor, you can just solve for as 10 raised to negative 14 minus pH. That will get you your X factor because 0 plus X equals this. So X equals this value. Plug in that value in for everywhere you see X. And then that will get you your KB value, which you could then use to solve for the Ka of the conjugate acid. KB for carbonate, con uh, Ka for hydrogen carbonate. By just taking 10 raised to negative 14, divide by KB. And then to solve for the hydrogen ion concentration at equilibrium, just take 10 raised to the negative pH. <coughs> So if you have a neutral salt, though, technically you should see your pH at about 7, which if that's the case, you do not need to calculate Ka and Kb. Just calculate the hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations only. So as a wrap-up, for your post-lab, just include the relevant reaction. That is, the reaction that's interacting with water. I, you do not need to include your dissociation reaction of your salt. Just if there's an ion from that salt that reacts with water, include just that pathway. And if it's something like potassium aluminum sulfate, well, if you saw your pH was acidic, use the aluminum pathway only. If you saw that your pH was actually basic, then write the sulfate chemical reaction pathway only. If there is no ion that has an interaction with water, then on your post lab, for that salt, just put no reaction. Uh, whenever there is a reaction, in addition to writing the relevant interaction reaction, calculate Ka, Kb, hydroxide ion concentration, and hydrogen or hydronium ion concentration. <coughs> That's for acidic and basic solutions. Uh, if it's if it's neutral, just calculate the concentrations of hydroxide and hydronium. Yeah. So in any case, that's your post lab, and I hope that that explains everything. As always, likes and subscribes are never necessary, but they would make me laugh if I saw them, or I don't know, a comment or two on a YouTube video. Well, whatever the case, wish you all the best. And peace.